Joel Hume Redmond was a violent drunkard who was served justice, not by court, but by a sledgehammer in the middle of a chaotic melee between a vigilante mob and the Evansville police force. This man had savagely beaten two of his previous wives, allegedly killed another, and was killed himself for the death of his last wife, Eva McFadden. Hume Redmond sat in his jail cell, listening to the shouts for blood outside of the Evansville Vandenberg County Jail. The crowd from Posey County was growing, seeking to take the law into their own hands. They had had enough of Redmond. They decided it was time to take his life. Redmond was a menace to the people of Posey County in the late 1800s, and he had finally scared them into taking action. He w had a reputation as an extremely uh, aggressive, violent individual around Posey County, especially Mount Vernon. He was a brawler and a fighter and an extreme drinker, had the reputation of drinking almost every night, certainly every weekend, and getting into fights. And, and people, men and women, were quite afraid of him as an individual. Redmond joined the 25th Indiana Volunteers in the Civil War. While he was stationed in Memphis, there is record of him killing an African American for unknown reasons. However, Redmond escaped the army before he could be punished. On April 18, 1882, Hume married Eva McFadden. He was 43 at the time, while Eva was only 19. From the beginning of the marriage, he frequently beat her. Neighbors consistently saw her with bruises on her face and body. On Saturday, October 7, 1882, Eva McFadden was murdered. There was a compelling case that Redmond was the murderer. Redmond came home from drinking in Mount Vernon and laid on the bed. Eva approached him, and he grabbed hold of her and beat her. He then took a revolver and shot her behind the left ear. He then ran to the door and shouted to his neighbors that his wife had committed suicide. Neighbors came and found Redmond sitting on the chair in the bedroom, while Eva was lying inside the door. The physician and the police showed up later to begin an examination. Redmond was taken to the Mount Vernon jail that night. A mob gathered supplies to break down the wall of the jail cell. Due to lack of mob leadership, the mob dissipated. Redmond was afraid, however, and gave everything he had to his remaining 14-year-old son. The marshal decided that Hume couldn't stay another night in Mount Vernon, and secretly moved him on a train depot to Evansville. The secret was not well kept as a Posey County mob moved towards Evansville. A group of 75 horsemen rode out and arrived sometime around midnight on October 11th. By 2.30 a.m., the men reached the courthouse and jail. The sheriff wouldn't let the mob in, so they broke down the door with sledgehammers that were carried in the buggy. The mob then overpowered the sheriffs and deputies and arrived at Hume's jail cell. Hume was rushed out the door with his hands bound. The leaders of the mob shouted the infamous cry, Boys, we've got him. The mob then began working their way back to Mount Vernon with Redmond, but the Evansville police were in hot pursuit. The fire department's chemical engine collided with the buggy Redmond was held in at the intersection of Main Street and 3rd Street, and the occupants were spilled on the ground. Seeing as there was no hope of keeping Hume and escaping, Hume was put to death with a sledgehammer blow to the head. Hume was taken into the hall of the courthouse along with another body, which was later identified as Daniel Murphy. Now what happened to these men is, is a question. Uh, we do not have the Vandenberg County criminal court records for that period of time. So we can't go to the primary source to see exactly what happened. We have to rely on what was said in the newspapers. In December, there was an article that said the trial would be set for January 17th. Uh, I've read the papers for January and actually for the next six months and never saw another reference to what happened with these people. Um, I don't know for sure, but I suspect it just sort of died away. Uh, I suspect there was less interest in pursuing this as time went on. And then I also suspect that the prosecutor was going to have a very difficult time 
of coming up with evidence to convict these people, uh, especially without the cooperation and the testimony of the people who were part of the mob, and that wasn't going to happen. So I think, as far as I know, the whole thing sort of died away. I, I think an interesting comment came from a minister uh, the following Sunday, where he said something to the effect that uh, uh, Redmond was a uh, fester on the body politic, but the actions was a stab to the heart of society.